So I lead a group here at the Media Lab. It's called the Digital Currency Initiative. Um, and that, that's our logo right there. That's the Media Lab. Um, I know you guys have been having a really great day. Sadly, there is a zero knowledge proof workshop happening at the same time. So I haven't been able to join you for as much of it as I would have liked. Um, but hopefully, I can come and share a little bit about what we're thinking about here. So um, the mission of our group is to create a future in which moving value across the internet is as intuitive and easy as moving information. So we really are kind of grounded in, um, in thinking about the internet. Um, the internet is a set of open protocols. Uh, and on top of those open protocols, we were able to build and create so much. Um, today, you can write a article on one side of the world, and in the next second, someone on the other side of the world has commented on it, and you're engaging in a conversation. But we really don't have anything like that for moving value around, for allocating capital to productivity. It's really, really hard to make payments across borders. It's really hard to create financial instruments. And we think that cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology um, are a step to address some of these problems. So I want to talk to you about what I think are some of the biggest challenges facing cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology right now and keeping this from being something that we can really just grab and run with. I think the first challenge is scalability. Uh, this technology is just simply not ready for billions of users. It just, it just won't work. Everything will fall over. Uh, I was talking to the, um, the creator of a technology called CryptoKitties the other day. And CryptoKitties, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, Digital Cats. Um, I actually have a sticker on my phone, but it's over there. Um, you know, it, it was, it's like one of the most interesting applications that's actually been built on this technology. It's cute. It's fun. It has a great UI. People really enjoy it. Um, when they launched, they basically made Ethereum fall over. And do you know how many users they had? Does anyone want to take a guess? How many? Anybody else? Any guesses? The answer is 50,000, by the way. 50,000 users. So I think you must have known that. Um, and, uh, and, 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 but but 50,000 users is nothing. It's a drop in the bucket compared to what a lot of these companies are promising and where they want to go. So scalability, I think, super fundamental challenge. Another major challenge is around regulatory clarity. Um, and someone I know and respect very much who works in the space calls blockchain technology regulatory arbitrage. Because basically what's happening here is we're just moving to a new setting and pretending like these things are not securities or are not financial instruments that are, that are heavily regulated and sometimes regulated for good reason. So um, I think that's keeping a lot of incumbents from getting into the space. It's keeping a lot of people from getting into the space. Uh, we don't have market integrity. There are a lot of exchanges that are doing really sketchy things. So I think regulatory clarity would be really helpful as well. Um, and then the third thing, which I hope you're getting a great opportunity to discuss today, is really figuring out where the rubber meets the road. What are the actual applications that really benefit, not just could work on this technology, but in fact are enabled by or really become so much better through this technology. And I don't think that those answers are obvious. I don't think that, um, I think a VC said this, whatever centralized applications we have, there's going to be a decentralized version. I don't agree with that at all, actually. I think, um, I think that this technology only really makes sense for a few different use cases, and it's going to be hard to imagine. Um, but what I want to dive into in a little bit more detail right now is the scalability issue. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about how we view scalability and what we're working on to try to address some of these problems. So solving scalability. How do we solve scalability in blockchains? Um, blockchains are, I think, fundamentally, unfortunately, not scalable. So what does that mean? Well, one way to solve scalability is what I'll call on-chain. So the way that a blockchain works is that every node in the network looks at, processes, verifies every single transaction. In a network like Ethereum, what that means is that every single node in the Ethereum network is running every step of every smart contract. 
it just blows my mind. As a person who works on databases and distributed systems, this is so unnecessary and wasteful, but it's at the core part of what a blockchain is. Now, one way to address this question is to make the blockchain faster. You can use different consensus algorithms for this. You can uh, buy faster computers, uh, buy, fast, buy more bandwidth. Um, you can try to beef up your blockchain. So that's one strategy for how to get more scalability, but I think it really has some fundamental limits. The second strategy is off-chain, and it's what I call layer two technologies. Now, when I say off-chain, you might be thinking to yourself, but isn't the whole point that we do everything on the blockchain? That's the exciting part. That's where everything should go. I think what's really exciting is getting the same or almost the same security guarantees as though you were using a blockchain while being able to do most of the work off-chain. So let's talk a little bit more about off-chain and layer two and what that means, okay? So, um, oh, forgot, I have a third one on here. Um, a third one is, I guess what you would call something in the middle, it's called side chains. Um, I think the plasma network is also an example of this, but the idea is that you can create many different parallel chains. So that's another way of scaling um, uh, or sharding. So let's talk a little bit about layer two. Um, so I think that there's a lot of different technologies that fall under this umbrella that often aren't really lumped together. So the first one is what's known as payment channels. This is the predominant way that the Bitcoin community is approaching scaling. And the idea is that you can lock up some funds in a payment channel on chain and then transact using those funds as many times as you want with micropayments, with fractions of a cent off chain using a whole network to route your payments around. The Lightning Network is sort of the biggest project and standard in this space right now. There are three companies that are doing great work on the Lightning Network. That would be Lightning Labs, a startup, uh, Blockstream, a more advanced startup, and then um, Async, uh, another company in Europe that are all working on Lightning protocol implementations. The only nonprofit in the space that I know of that's also working on what I think will be incredibly important is the DCI and the Media Lab, which is working on our own Lightning Network implementation. Um, I think that this is going to end up becoming a standard. And when you think about things like standardization, you really want to have um, nonprofits involved as well. You want universities and you want foundations to be a part of setting those standards. Um, in the Ethereum world, the equivalent of payment channels are called state channels. Um, there are several different groups doing really interesting things in the Ethereum world with state channels. And I think a really interesting question is how do you make your application fit the state channel model? Because it's not obvious. The CryptoKitties folks, we talk to them extensively, can't just take their application, plop it on state channels, and all of a sudden they can handle more users. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. Um, so figuring out how to effectively use state channels is still a major challenge, but I think that they're really promising. Um, another area that's kind of related to do these two things, but I think worth breaking out on its own, is sort of the general nature of off-chain smart contracts. Um, we really believe that we shouldn't be doing everything on-chain. We should be doing the minimal amount of work on-chain. We should only be doing what absolutely has to be done on-chain. And we should try to move everything else off of the chain because it's so expensive. So using the chain is an anchor of trust. Um, and so another project that we're working on here at the DCI is called Discrete Log Contracts. It's a way of doing interesting sort of smart contract type things, futures, insurance, gambling, betting on Bitcoin, but not in a way that runs on the chain, but instead runs at a higher level, layer two, and is anchored to the chain. Um, and there's other people doing really interesting things with off-chain computation as well, like Truebit. So all of this is a buildup because um, you're at a blockchain event right now. I assume that means you like going to blockchain events and you want to go to more blockchain events. So I want to tell you about our event <laughs> called the Layer 2 Summit, which is going to bring together people working on every single one of the things that I listed up there to get together to talk to each other because as so often happens in this community, the people in the payment channel Bitcoin world don't really talk to the people in the state channel Ethereum world. So we're throwing this conference. Uh, day one will be talks at Fidelity on the 18th. And day two will be a hackathon 
here at MIT in the Media Lab on the 19th. Um, and you are all welcome to join the website, which I foolishly did not put up there, is bostonblockchaincommunity.com. Uh, here's sort of the, um, the list of all of the stuff that we're working on at the DCI. Um, but really, you should go to this website if you want to find out more about it. Um, and I would love to talk to you more about your interest in the space and what you're working on. Our focus is on cryptocurrencies and open, permissionless blockchain networks. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks.